They say the ancestors came on the backs of the waves, guided by stars, following whispers in the wind. For generations, Polynesian families told of ancient voyages, vast distances crossed in canoes, through an ocean with no end. But for more than a century, the world called it impossible. Western scholars dismissed the stories as myth, romantic, perhaps but surely, not history. How could people from tiny islands, with no metal, no maps, no written records, have charted a sea that spans one-third of the planet? How could they have reached Hawaii, Rapa Nui, and Aotearoa, thousands of miles apart? The textbooks said they didn't, that these islands were settled by accident, drift, or by others entirely. And then the genome spoke. Ancient DNA, lifted from long-buried bones, whispered a different story, one of purpose, of mastery. Polynesians, it turns out, are the children of voyagers who chose to cross the Pacific again and again, and their DNA carries proof of journeys even more astonishing than the old legends dared tell, because inside this genetic tapestry lies a twist, a dual ancestry, on one hand, a deep maternal lineage from island Southeast Asia, elegant, precise, unmistakable, on the other, a strong paternal signal from Papuan ancestors, men from the rugged islands of Melanesia, a fusion of two worlds, meeting somewhere beyond the known maps. But the puzzle doesn't end there. In the farthest reaches of this oceanic world, on islands like Rapa Nui, another ghostly thread appears, a fragment of DNA, unmistakably linked to indigenous peoples of South America, a clue that suggests these island navigators may have done what no European dared until centuries later, crossed all the way to the Americas, and returned. How did a people from small tropical islands come to bridge continents? How many voyages remain unrecorded beneath the surface of this genetic sea? And the question that haunts every new discovery, where did this lineage truly begin, and just how far did they travel? For decades, the theories clashed like waves in a storm. One school called it the fast train. A direct surge of Austronesian seafarers, racing from Taiwan to Polynesia. Swift, clean, uninterrupted. Another spoke of a slow boat. A migration that paused, lingered, absorbing the cultures, the genes of the islands along the way, and in the shadows to bolder claim that the Polynesians themselves were born of the Americas. Drift voyagers, sailing westward on the great currents. Each theory told a different origin story. Each dismissed the others, until the DNA began to speak. Mitochondrial DNA, passed from mother to child, revealed a truth no one could ignore. Nearly 94% of Polynesian maternal lineages led back to Asia, an ancient pulse from island Southeast Asia, etched deep in the bloodline of Polynesian women. It seemed to confirm the fast train. A voyage out of Asia, clear and direct, but then came the Y chromosomes, the markers of the paternal line, the story of the men. And this story was different. Here, the majority of Polynesian Y chromosomes traced not to Asia, but to Melanesia, to the highlands and rainforests of New Guinea, the ancient islands of near Oceania. A contradiction, two stories, written in the same people. How could a migration so pure on the maternal side be so entangled on the paternal? What happened in those lost generations, when the canoes touched unfamiliar shores? Historians turn to the oral traditions, to the carvings, the chants, the designs of the great double-hulled canoes. Vessels built not to drift, but to choose a course, to cut through the Pacific with deliberate purpose, guided by stars, swells, and instinct. And as the debate swirled, one ancient skeleton, buried beneath centuries of silence, would soon rise to challenge everything we thought we knew about this voyage, and when it truly began. For years, the story seemed certain. Polynesians, a people forged from two ancient worlds, Asia and Melanesia, a mixed lineage, born as voyagers moved eastward, mingling with the islanders of New Guinea and beyond. It made sense, on paper. But in 2016, a discovery shattered that neat conclusion. In the damp soil of Vanuatu and beneath the sands of Tonga, archaeologists unearthed bones. Lapidera burials, more than 3,000 years old. The ancestors of Polynesia's first true voyagers. When their DNA was sequenced, the results sent ripples through the scientific world. No trace of Papuan ancestry. None. 
Instead, the pure genetic signature from island Southeast Asia. The first Polynesians were not mixed at all. They were Austronesian through and through. But how? How had they crossed the Western Pacific, past the towering highlands of New Guinea, without absorbing the genes of those ancient islanders? Had they sailed straight past, untouched by the peoples who had lived there for millennia? Or had something else happened, something lost to history? Even the artifacts seemed to echo this mystery. Lapida pottery, delicate, geometric, almost mathematical in design, marked their trail, from the Bismarck Archipelago, through the Solomon Sea, eastward to Tonga and Samoa, a breadcrumb path across the ocean, each shard a whisper of a people on the move, yet in their bones, no sign of Melanesian blood, a puzzle, a contradiction, because today, Polynesians do carry Papuan ancestry, woven into their genes. So if these first pioneers bypassed New Guinea, untouched, then when did the Melanesian bloodline enter the story? And how? That question would haunt geneticists, until another wave of discoveries began to surface from a time known to Polynesian oral history as the Long Pause. The first wave of voyagers reached Samoa and Tonga nearly 3,000 years ago. They had crossed vast waters, guided only by stars, wind, and memory a feat unmatched in its time, and then the ocean fell silent. For nearly a thousand years, no new islands were settled. A pause, long enough for generations to forget why. Archaeologists called it the long pause. A strange chapter in the Polynesian story, a migration that simply stopped. But why? Had the wind shifted, locking the seas? Had the ancient canoes reached their limit? Or had society itself changed, choosing to root? Instead of Rome, the answers remain elusive, but inside the DNA, subtle clues begin to emerge. During this long stillness, the genetic tapestry of Polynesia began to weave its unique pattern. Matrilocal traditions, where men would marry into the women's families, took hold, explaining why. Across the islands, we see Asian maternal lines and Melanesian paternal ones, a cultural shift etched into the genome, and as generations passed, the canoes themselves evolved. Hull designs grew stronger, more stable, able to endure the longest crossings. Navigation, once instinct, became refined, but a celestial art. The stars were no longer guides alone, they were maps. Each constellation a waypoint in a vast oceanic highway. And then, without warning, the pause ended. Something changed. A new impulse stirred, bold, unstoppable. The canoes were readied. The navigators trained, and this time, no island would be too far. Then the silence broke. Somewhere between the stars and the sea, a decision was made. A new voyage, farther than any before. It began with a single crew, a handful of canoes, leaving the known waters of Samoa behind. Toward a darkness no one had charted. No maps. No certain landfall. Only faith and the stars. And this time, the leap would be vast. We now know this not from stone tools or oral chants, but from the code written inside living blood. Geneticists discovered it, rare variants, tiny mutations passed from parent to child. Each voyage, each island settled, left its own genetic fingerprint, a trail of clues scattered across the Pacific. And what they found was astonishing. From Samoa, a founder group sailed east, landing in the Cook Islands. And from there, the expansion quickened, a cascade of new settlements, wave after wave, eastward, ever eastward. We can see it now, in the very genomes of today's Polynesians. Each island, each crossing, timestamped by the rise or fall of rare genetic markers. Traits once common in the mother island, fading or flourishing in the next. It's as if the ocean itself kept a record, a shimmering, invisible map, hidden inside the people. And when you imagine it, those first canoes, Cutting through a black Pacific, stars above, infinite depths below. You feel the enormity of it, the courage it took. Because this wasn't island hopping anymore. This was leaping into the unknown. And yet, what no one could have predicted was that this voyage would lead not just to new islands, but to another continent. For centuries, it was just a whisper, a rumor carried in the winds across the Pacific, that somehow... Long before Europeans touched these waters, the connection had been made between two distant worlds, Polynesia and the Americas. 
Skeptics dismissed it, a fantasy, a fringe idea. After all, what sailor, in the year 1200, could cross an ocean that wide? And then in 2020, the genome spoke again. Deep in the DNA of Eastern Polynesians, scientists found it. A thread. A fragment of Native American ancestry. Unmistakable, undeniable. And older than any European contact. It had been there all along. Hiding in plain sight. Evidence of a meeting across the sea. But whose voyage had made it possible? The Polynesians, the greatest navigators the world had ever known. Or indigenous sailors from the Americas, drifting west on uncertain currents? The mystery deepened. And then came the crop. A humble plant, the sweet potato, thriving in Polynesian fields long before Europeans arrived. Its origins? South America. Its Polynesian name, Camara, echoing the Quechua word from the Andes. A living artifact. Proof that something someone had made the crossing. A voyage, written in both genes and roots. But still, the question lingers. In the dead of night, under stars unchanged for a thousand years, whose canoe first touched that far shore, and whose story, still hidden beneath waves and time, is waiting to be uncovered next. For years, some still whispered it. Maybe the Polynesians had drifted. Maybe storms, or blind chance, had scattered them across the Pacific. But the DNA told a different story. A story of precision. Of purpose. Hidden in the genome were rare mutations. Tiny markers, passed through generations, unchanged. Each one, a silent witness to a voyage, to an island, to a moment in time. Scientists began to map them, island by island, mutation by mutation, and the pattern that emerged was no accident. It was a road map, a sequence, a living chart of human movement across the greatest ocean on Earth, from Samoa to the Cooks, from the Societies to the Tuamotus, from the Marquesas to Rapa Nui, each leap marked by a genetic signature, each island settled by design, not drift, because to these voyagers, the sea was not empty. It was a world of signs, a language written in stars, swells, and memory. And across this vast blue expanse, cultural echoes remained. Songs, carvings, words spoken in distant dialects, still bearing the same roots. A lineage of thought, as much as of blood. But as the genetic roadmap grew clearer, a deeper question began to surface. The journey had not been simple. The mutation suggested more complexity than anyone had imagined. More crossings. More encounters. More waves. And the scientists began to wonder, what if this migration wasn't a single wave, but many? The genetic map seemed clear. A single migration eastward, island by island. A great wave of voyaging that sculpted the Pacific world. But then the anomalies appeared. A tool here, shaped in a style not seen before. A genetic marker there, out of place, unexpected. And in the oral traditions of scattered islands, whispers of visitors of strangers returning across waters, once thought impassable. A second wave. The emerging theory is bold and unsettling. That long after the first pioneers leapt east, others followed. Migrations from Melanesia. Not vast fleets, but small groups. Families. Traders. Explorers. Carrying with them new genes, new ideas, new bloodlines. The evidence is subtle. Papuan markers. Layered in later generations, tool designs subtly shifted. Stories of arrival encoded in chant and myth. A reminder that these islands were not sealed. They were connected, across impossible distances. A living network of cultures in motion. Polynesians were never isolated. They were part of something larger, a web of oceanic exchange. And now, as ancient DNA techniques evolve, as older and deeper samples are unlocked, the puzzle grows more intricate, more alive, because each new strand of ancient DNA holds a promise to reveal layers of this story we've barely begun to imagine. And beneath the sands, beneath the bones, beneath the sea itself, answers still wait. In every heartbeat of the modern Polynesian world, the story lingers, not just in language, not only in song, but deep in the blood itself. A legacy, written in strands of DNA, passed through unbroken lines. The echoes of a voyage so vast, so improbable, it still humbles science today. 
Across an ocean that once seemed endless, they carved a path. One canoe at a time. One island at a time. A migration that stands as one of humanity's greatest feats. And now, their descendants are reclaiming that narrative. Not as myth. Not as legend. But as truth. With genomes as proof, and voices as witness. In Hawaii, the great double-hulled canoe, Klee sails again. Its crew guided not by GPS, but by stars. By the same constellations their ancestors once followed, over black seas and silver waves. Each stroke of the paddle, a heartbeat. Each landfall, a remembrance. For the past is not static. It moves, with every voyage renewed. And with every new DNA strand sequenced, another piece of this great puzzle emerges. Another crossing hinted at. Another encounter, still buried in the code. So we ask, what else waits to be found? Beneath the waves and lost canoes, in unseen graves? Or in the very strands of DNA we have yet to read? Because the ocean still holds secrets. And the story of these voyagers is far from over. If you're fascinated by lost histories and ancient DNA mysteries, subscribe now for more untold stories.